We're also grateful to live in a city like East Point, where anything is possible if we all work towards the same goals. Please let us not to lose sight of this and count our blessings. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States, States of America, America. and to the republic, the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Can you please call the roll? Mayor Owens? Here. Councilperson Baker? Here. Councilperson Curley? Here. Councilperson DeMonico? Here. Councilperson Lacito? Here. Thank you. We have the approval of the agenda, and I know uh, Mayor Pro Tem wants to add a proclamation this evening, as well as I added a proclamation to for the National Hispanic Heritage Month and appreciation for that. That started September 15th through October 15th. So I just want to add that to make sure that we show homage to what they have done uh, throughout our country as well. So Ms. Lucida, okay. did you wanna? I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead. Madam Mayor, I, I would actually, I would like to, I don't wanna add a proclamation. I am interested in adding a resolution okay. um, to acknowledge indigenous people today on behalf of the Arts and Cultural Diversity Commission. Okay. I'll support that. Moved and supported. Please call the roll for that. Councilperson Lacito? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. Is that included with the proclamation I just added? Yes, that's fine. Okay. So, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mayor Pro Tem, we do the proclamation and resolution before we go into the hearing of the public, correct? Yeah, we can. Okay, sure. sounds good. So I can, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna read the proclamation and if you wanna read, uh, is the, Arts and Cultural Diversity, did they want to read that? I'm not sure if they want to read it since they introduced it. Um, I would love to have them uh, read it if they would. I okay, that's fair. Fine. Is that? That's fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read this proclamation first and then after the um, proclamation, Ms. Diabo can read if she wants to or they can ha if they have a selected person to read, they can read their resolution. City of East Point. Whereas with over 60 million Hispanic Americans residing in the United States, Hispanic Americans wake up the largest minority group in the nation and have significantly contributed to our government, culture, and economy over the generations. And whereas the Hispanic community in America has made many important advances in areas of law, religion, agriculture, art, music, education, technology, architecture, cuisine, theater, and exploration, and whereas Hispanic Americans have provided Michigan and the United States with unique social and cultural influences, fundamentally enriching the extra extraordinary character of our state and nation. And whereas Michigan is fortunate to conceive, this is all in black and white, I'm sorry. Whereas Michigan is fortunate to count among its population a large number of residents of Spanish and Latin American descent who grow businesses, offer innovative ideas, strengthen our economy, create jobs, and contribute to our daily lives. And whereas during this month, Michigan Hispanic American community will celebrate National Hispanic Heritage Month through a series of special events featuring Hispanic history, food, dance, and art celebrating the rich tradition and many contributions this community has made to the state of Michigan. And whereas the city of East Point should recognize, appreciate, and honor the countless achievements of Hispanic Americans and continue our efforts to ensure our city is welcoming and inclusive place that provides just and equal opportunities for all. Now, therefore, the city council for the city of East Point does hereby proclaim September 15th and October 15, 2020, as National Hispanic Heritage Month. Thank you, um, 
Mr. Gaston for putting that proclamation just in time for me to read it today. Um, next would be, is Ms. Daigo, good evening. Are you gonna read that resolution or did you have somebody that you wanted to read it? Hi, actually, um, the Arts and Cultural Diversity Commission submitted this as a resolution so that the members of city council could vote on it. Um, mm -hmm. If it is something that you guys still want me to read right now, I'm more than happy to, but the intention was for it to be a resolution and not a proclamation because resolutions require um, council vote, whereas a proclamation does not. So I'm leaving it up to you guys for how you would like us me to proceed. Please, you can read it if you have it right in front of you. Sure. Thank you, ma'am. Whereas Indigenous Peoples Day was first proposed in September 1977 to the United Nations International NGO Conference on Discrimination Against Indigenous Populations in the Americas by Indigenous Delegates from Native Nations. And whereas in 1990, representatives from 120 indigenous nations at the first continental Confer conference on 500 years of Indian resistance unanimously passed a resolution to transform Columbus Day into an opportunity to reveal historical truths about the invasion and consequent genocide and environmental destruction to organize against its continuation today. Whereas, the United States endorsed the United Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples on December 16, 2010, and Article 15 of that declaration states, Indigenous Peoples have the right to the dignity and diversity of their cultures, traditions, histories, and aspirations, which shall be appropriately reflected in education and public information. States should take effective measures in consultation and cooperation with the indigenous peoples concerned to combat prejudice and eliminate discrimination and to promote tolerance, understanding, and good relations among indigenous peoples and all other segments of society. And whereas the state of Michigan recognizes the presence of three major groups in our state today, the Chippewa, originally Ojibwa, the Ottawa, originally Ottawa, the Potawatomi, originally Bodawamik, who have lived upon this land for centuries. And whereas the Tribal Council of the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians has passed a resolution to officially recognize Indigenous Peoples Day on the second Monday in October. And whereas on this second Monday of October, we should honor the historic cultural and contemporary significance of indigenous peoples and their ancestral lands that also became known as the Americas and celebrate their contributions to East Point, other communities throughout Michigan, across the United States and all over the world. Now therefore be it resolved that the City Council of East Point, Michigan do hereby declare October 12th, 2020 as Indigenous Peoples Day in East Point a day to reflect upon the ongoing struggles of indigenous peoples and to celebrate the thriving culture and value that indigenous peoples add to our community and to uplift our country's indigenous roots, history, and contributions. Thank you, Ms. Dybault, very much for that. Um, and to the Cultural Diversity uh, Commission for always putting things together. Actually, um, I was looking at TV and found out that the um, Hispanic uh, month was this month and so we just want to continuously keep up and celebrating all you know backgrounds and cultures in our city and now we are going to go to the hearing of the public this is the first session of the hearing of the public the second session at the end so you get an additional three minutes if you don't finish the first three minutes um, I ask you to please address all of council not certain council members and be respectful and if you cannot do this, I will ask you to stop. Please state your name and your residency. Um, and I will time you when you come up and start to speak. Mr. Fairbrother, do we have anybody at this time? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have a Miss Cheryl. I'm gonna butcher, butcher your last name. Cheryl, K-I-R-O-U-A-C. Uh, Cheryl, if you'd like to speak, the floor is now yours.
You can't hear you, ma'am. How about now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to thank whoever is responsible. I had reached out to uh, Mr. DeMonico on Sunday evening about some political signs that were um, blocking the view at the um, Beaconsfield and Nine Mile intersection. And um, he recommended that I email uh, Miss Doom, which I did um, Sunday evening. And as I approach that intersection today twice. I just wanted to thank them, whoever was responsible. All of those political signs that were blocking the intersection have been taken down and it's, it's all corrected. So thank you very much for whoever was responsible for that. I appreciate it. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else, Mr. Fairbrother? Yes, Madam Mayor. Eric Moore um, has, her hand raised. Eric, is it Eric or oh, Eric? Hi, my name is Eric Moyer. I live in Girls Point. Good evening, Point. sir. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Please begin. Um, good evening. My name is Eric Moyer. I'd like to tell you about my family and my deep roots in East Point. When I was six years old, my family and I moved to East Point, where we lived for more than 40 years. In 1983, my father opened Ken South Park Service. In 2015, I co-founded GS Ashley, where we are granted a license to operate a medical provisioning center in Ann Arbor. After a rigorous vetting process and due to our impeccable compliance record, GS Ashley was awarded one of the first of three adult use licenses for the state of Michigan in 2019. During this time, GS Ashley also entered into a joint venture with Holistic Industries, a multi-state oper operator with over 10 years of fully integrated cannabis experience. In addition to Ann Arbor, we now operate a provisioning center in Corktown. We were also awarded a highly competitive merit-based municipal license from Madison Heights. We are currently building a 65,000 square foot retail, grow and processing facility for medical and recreational use. When we learned that the DDA in East Point would not be included in the cannabis ordinance, we purchased the former Waterfalls Bar at 20958 Gratiot, which we have made significant improvements with paint and cleanup. I am here today to discuss the selection of cannabis licenses for East Point. Council tonight is considering an amendment to switch from the merit-based approach to a random lottery system for the selection of the three cannabis licenses. With a lottery system, East Point has no control over selecting an experienced, well-financed operator with a proven track record of safe, compliant, and successful operations in this highly regulated industry. You won't be able to look at the history of how the company engages the community after licensure, and you will likely end up with someone who does not care about East Point. Under the Michigan Regulation and Taxation of Marijuana Act of 2018, Section 9, the following is stated. If a municipality limits the number of marijuana establishments that may be licensed in the municipality pursuant to Section 6 of this act, and that limit prevents the department from issuing a state license to all applicants who meet the requirements of subsection three of this section, the municipality shall decide among competing applications by a competitive process intended to select applicants who are best suited to operate in compliance with this act within the municipality. This statute states East Point must use a competitive process, process and it is in the city's best- 30 seconds, sir. It ensures East Point selects the best and most experienced operators instead of a random draw from well over 100 sites that qualify. You may get a completely inexperienced group or speculators that don't even want to operate and have no care or commitment for the local community. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir, and thank you for that information as well. Do you have anyone else, Mr. Fairbrother? Yes, Madam Mayor. Uh, Mr. Frank Acavetti would like to speak. Frank, Good evening, me? Mr. Acavetti. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I want to speak tonight regarding under unfinished business, uh, item C. Uh, un under item C, there are some recommendations from the city manager's office. I particularly want to speak to, uh, to suggestion number nine. Suggestion number nine, uh, amend section or add section 10.2. 3230E, which would provide a lottery system uh, for choosing who receives a license. This is 
uh, definitely not within the spirit of what the Planning Commission had worked on for over a year for the community. The Planning Commission had worked to have these uh, establishments enhance the business district, not just be randomly spread around the community based on being pulled out of a hat. And uh, I believe that uh, administration and council could work together uh, to go by the spirit of what the ordinance was supposed to be, which would be an ordinance to, to revitalize the community with these medical marijuana establishments. I thank you for your time and I thank you for your service to East Point. Thank you, Mr. Acovetti. Anyone else, Mr. Fairbrother? Yes, Madam Mayor. Uh, Mr. Chris Ayulo would like to speak. Mr. Ayulo, can you hear us? Ayulo, Ayulo is not here. Ayello is. Good evening, Mr. Ayello. How are you? Good evening. Hi, how are you? Good. You may begin. So it's a path of now two years down the road. And I see a lot of friendly faces and we've been discussing marijuana for two years. I'm a little bit older and a little bit grayer and I feel I've aged and I feel I know each and every one of you. I might even know your kids by now, but let's get to the topic. For a year and a half, the planning commission told us why they wanted to select their own uh, why they wanted the city to select the operators for one and a half years. We heard that. It was tied up in the Planning Commission. It came out of the Planning Commission and came to Council with the same theme. And the same theme to the Council is that pick the operators. You know who's been in and out of the Council Chambers for a year and a half. You know by now who wants to participate in East Point. You know who has helped carve and work out the terms and conditions of the ordinance, who's um, helped lay out what the law is all about in Michigan, shared sites, shared visits, educated. You all know who's done all of that. And now at the last minute to even think of going to a lotto where you pull out of a hat an operator that you have no idea who they are or what they've done or what they can do or if they even are currently operating a store. So um, you have a very bright city attorney who knows that objective criteria findings are the way to go. If you don't go that way, you'll end up like other cities. Objective criteria such as show me, we're not in the Missouri, we're not in Missouri anymore, it's a show me state. We are in Michigan where it is, we're beyond that. And we are at the stage in the industry where if you have it, show it to me now. What do I mean? Are you operating, yes or no? And where are you operating? And show us and prove that to us. How long have you been operating? Show that and prove it to us. Do you have a grow? Show us your license. <clears throat> where are you growing? And prove it to us. If you stay on objective standards, you, you will not complicate the issue. You will not complicate the industry. You will not complicate yourself um, and the scoring process. We all know that we are all here saying the same theme. Everybody is from the planning commission to the industry to I think the leaders of this city want to see operators that they- 30 trust. seconds left. And so that's my 10 cents for the evening. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, sir. Mr. Fairbrother. Madam Mayor, I see no other digital hands raised or comments in the Zoom group chat box. I believe it's now safe to close the floor. The first hearing of the public is now closed. Moving to the approval of minutes. Thank you, Mr. Fairbrother. Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. I would move to accept the minutes from the show cause hearing of September 1st, 2020 and the regular meeting of September 15th, 2020. Court. Move Mr. Porter. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Mr. DeMonaco. Sure. Ed, one quick one. Usually we separate those by address, so it's easy to see which uh, okay. part is which. Sometimes we, sometimes we don't. I don't have the address. Sometimes so, we don't, Mr. DeMonaco. Do you want us to do that what, tonight? What, what, I've, never, I've never given an address before. No, no, no. Not, not in the motion, just like when the, the minute, how the minutes are set up. Usually we just separate it by address so that it's clear which hearing is which with address. okay i retract i retract my motion okay 
I w well, I was just asking if we can just split it by address yeah, it's clear. Man, That's all. Madam right. Mayor, if I could if I could just chime in just momentarily. Uh, yes, I apologize. The, um, the court reporter, because uh, these um, these show cause hearings were conducted via Zoom, uh, the court reporter apparently combined all of it as as one long transcript. In in past cases, they would be separate transcripts, uh, one for each address. This time, it's more like a one long run on transcript. And so I will speak to the uh, the court reporter. So the next time um, the council conducts show cause hearings, so just for simplicity purposes, that each of the addresses are divided um, and separated. So I, I think that's what the uh, that's what the concern was. Is that in this case the, it was one long run on section of minutes, whereas in previous times it was a separate transcript for each address. Okay, then I'll just, uh, Madam Mayor, I'll just make the motion to accept the. Uh, regular minutes uh, of our council meeting of September 15th, 2020. And we'll table the other one. Any comments on that, Councilman DeMonica? Huh? Okay, I need support on that though. No support? I said, I'll, I said no support. I'll support that. <laughs> Move and support it. Please call the roll. I have motion maker Curly supported by DeMonico. Councilperson Curly? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. At this time, we have no scheduled hearing. So let's move to unfinished business. <clears throat> Council? First one is item number A second reading and adoption of the ordinance number. 1201 amend chapter 50 zoning. For so Madam Mayor. Oh. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, I'll motion to uh, give second reading to and adopt uh, ordinance 1201, uh, which amends chapter 50 zoning article 17 supplemental regulations, section 50 126 exterior lighting regarding string and or rope lighting. Support. Who would support any um, discussion on this? Seeing none, um, call the roll, please. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Thank you. Next item is item B, the second reading adoption of ordinance number 1202. Sure, Madam Mayor, I'll motion then too that we give second reading to and adopt ordinance 1202, which amends chapter 50 zoning article 18 signs, section 50-184 prohibited signs, string and or rope lighting. So I'll support that. Moved and supported. Any discussion, Council? Yeah, Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, just a quick comment. Um, this, this is going to pass and this is something brand new of course and um, it's going to be brand new to the business people who have the roof lining around the window so i would just hope that whoever's in charge of the code informers officers that they're all consistent each time they go out that uh, what is said to one business people is the exact same thing uh, to the other person so i'm 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 just hoping that will happen Thank you. Thank you. Anyone that, and everybody who is not counsel, please turn off, um, put yourself on mute, please. Madam Mayor and counsel, please put your um, phones or your computers on mute. Thank you very much. We have a motion and support. Please call the roll. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Next item is item number C, discussion and possible motion on the proposed changes to ordinance number 1184. <clears throat> Council? Madam Mayor? Yes, ma'am. Um, I would like to break this up into two different um, 
discussions or possible motions if possible. I would like to know if council would agree to me making a motion to approve one through eight on the list and then discuss nine and 10. Council thought. I can't, for those that do not have their, the agenda item for the public mayor pro tem, can you um, let them know what those two items you want to discuss and those items you want to approve, if you can do it as short as possible? Okay, um, so the ones I would like to approve right now is section 10-23, which is um, adding a 21 day deadline to appeal a denial to a hearing officer. Um, Section 10-288, just to change the city clerk's office to building department, the wording. 10-230, uh, um, A3I, is to change community development department to building department. Section 10-230 is to change city planner to building official. 10-237 is to change the city clerk to the building official. 10-226 is to change the word permit to permit application. 10-226 um, is to change the word permit to permit holder. And number eight is section 10-232, change the word the in the last sentence to then. So the section reads then promptly upon entering. Thank you. So they're all like basically like language changes in the ordinance, just like minor language um, changes one through eight. So that's why I would I would recommend um, approving those changes that I just suggested um, at this time. Also, <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> I think that's a good idea, uh, Sarah. I would support Sarah's uh, motion to approve one through eight. Have you got a motion and support? Please call the roll. Councilperson Lucido. Yes. Councilperson Curley. Yes. Councilperson Baker. Yes. Mayor Owens. Yes. And Councilperson DeMonico. Yes. And then moving forward, I guess we can start a conversation about the possibility of adding language for a lottery system. We had a lot of people this evening speak um, about the disadvantage of a lottery system and the pros of doing what was in our original ordinance of um, doing like a point system. You, you want to start the conversation? <laughs> well, um, I understand like administration's concern with um, doing the point system. But at this time, in my, in my opinion, I don't think I would be more concerned about too many applicants qualifying under our present ordinance. And if we were to change it to a lottery system, I think that we need to really tighten our ordinance to make it stricter, to make sure that we get the most qualified applicants. Um, I can't, anyone else from council would like to speak on these last two? Yeah, I just, Sarah, what, um, is there any particular part of the ordinance that you would think we need to tighten up? Well, I think that we should require um, whoever, you know, one of the maybe pre rock workers that's in our ordinance, we can add that they have existing businesses already that are, you know, run and regulated by the state properly and they haven't had any, you know, major issues or concerns with the businesses so that we know that they have experience running this type of business. Um, that was one of the things that I thought maybe we might be able to add into the ordinance if we just did decide to go the route of the lottery. Um, just maybe, you know, things like that to really kind of just make sure we get the most qualified applicant. Yeah. Um, when, uh, when we talked about this, um, uh, administration, as you've been mentioned already, we're pretty adamant, um, to have the, um, lottery system uh and i, I know i maybe i can madam mayor if i could ask the, our attorney um that recommendation that you're making now i would assume uh, richard that you were part of that recommendation um 
and I guess what, if you could tell us what the major concerns were from the lot, from the lottery system to uh, the interview system. Thank you, uh, Councilman um, Curley. I'm happy to do so. The administration's concern is um, one, a matter of fairness. The way the current ordinance is drafted, uh, the committee would select from a pool of applications going through the criteria and essentially uh, make a decision with regard to who was best qualified. Concern of, um, the, of city administration is that there will inevitably be uh, some party who believes that uh, they were more qualified in that the commission uh, erred in making that determination, thus resulting in litigation uh, and potentially expensive litigation to the city. One way to combat that would be to allow the commission uh, or committee to continue uh, in its uh, determinations and selection process and after determining that a particular application or applicant meets the objective criteria contained in the ordinance, that application then would be entered into a lottery system. And from the qualified applicants that would be entered into that lottery, uh, a random lottery would be conducted and the winners then would be uh, selected. Uh, they would be anonymous because the person selecting or the applicants from the actual in that lottery can be conducted by uh, in any reasonable way. Uh, there was an administrator or recommendation from city administration that that lottery be conducted by a third party who is completely unrelated to the city in any way possible to make the system as fair as possible. And then that person would make that selection for the particular licenses that have been uh, uh, allowed under the existing uh, ordinance. So primarily, uh, Councilman Curley, city, city administration uh, had the concern of being as fair as possible. So that, that's, that's the, I would say, the primary concern. I know, Elke, you are uh, listening in if there's anything that you'd like to add to that, but I believe that was the primary concern of city administration. Yes, it was. It was uh, the concern of our, the entire group. Uh, it was a unanimous recommendation from the police department, from everyone who's involved. And, uh, it, you know, I certainly understand where those who've spoken, where their thoughts are and, and their concerns are. But on the other hand, if we take a look at how well a business has done in the past and, you know, do they have a good business background? Do they have experience? That's a very positive thing, but that also excludes any any other business who would like to start any new business it, it's exclusionary and so that's what we're striving not to be as exclusionary in any way but to give everyone an equal opportunity was not one of the thank you uh, madam mayor if i could continue um sure, please was was not one of the concerns also um uh, the amount of litigation yes it was can somebody speak to that? I can, and uh, our attorney can. Mr. Albright? Well, the, there's always the potential for litigation. Um, if, a lottery, if a lottery system is used, I anticipate there will be an aggrieved party who will likely file some type of lawsuit arguing that the process is unfair. I think that is there's a high probability of that happening if a lottery system is not used. Either way, I think that based on the history and experiences of surrounding municipalities uh, and the litigation that has been uh, filed, uh, I think there's a high probability that uh, regardless of what's, what mechanism is used uh, and ultimately employed by the city of East Point, that there will be litigation. It's just a matter of trying to uh, minimize uh, the type of litigation uh, that, would, uh, that would happen. Either way, our office is ready to defend uh, the current ordinance uh, if there is litigation and uh, a lottery system if the council decides to uh, go that route. Ultimately, that is uh, the decision of the city council 
as to which process um, okay. it wishes to employ. I know that there has been a lot of discussion on this topic over the last couple of years. Um, there really has, and I know that we are close to finally accepting uh, applications, uh, but this was a concern of the uh, of city administration after uh, several meetings and after looking at the uh, after looking at the existing ordinance and just talking about uh, the mechanics of how all that will work. Um, so those were the concerns of the city administration. That was the primary one. Okay. But, all right. Let me. I need to follow up on that, uh, Rich. Sure. Uh, it's my understanding that you mentioned. Well, you know, there's going to be litigation either way, but your office could take care of it. Was not the one of the big concerns that litigation would be extremely higher if we went with the interviewing process rather than the ping pong ping pong balls in a bucket. Yeah, yeah, Councilman Curley, that's all, that's all, it's a valid concern. If, if I, I wished I had a, a magic crystal ball to, to determine what would happen. Um, we're, the city administration was just looking at it from a standpoint of if, if a lottery system is used, it would hopefully reduce the amount of litigation. But again, it's, it's, a, big, it's a big uncertainty, it really is. It may, be, it may happen that the, that the applicants are selected and no lawsuits um, are filed which would be certainly wonderful uh, for the city. Um, but based on the track record of other municipalities and the litigious nature of some of these uh, entities, uh, I, I, I think there's a probability that litigation would happen either way. Okay, either way. So, so I'm not, <laughs> that, was one of my, was, that was one of my biggest concern, uh, Mr. Albright, uh, that the five of you were very adamant about the number of potential lawsuits, litigation, um, if we went, if we didn't go through the uh, process that you're recommending. I mean, that was, that was tantamount. That was a huge discussion among the five of you to us that the amount of litigation would be extreme. And now, yes. now, I'm, now I'm hearing you saying, no, that's not, it's almost like you're, okay. No, I'm, uh, I'm not saying I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying well, that yeah, you are. a high probability of litigation. What we're trying to do is we're trying to minimize the 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 likelihood of litigation if a lottery system is utilized. But right. if the council decides not to go with uh, a lottery system and a lawsuit is filed, we are certainly ready to defend the uh, lawsuit. Of course, we're, you are. we're trying to avoid that as much as possible. Oh. Um, Madam, I, I know I'm taking a lot of time. Uh, Madam Mayor, so forgive me, but mm -hmm. this is so important. Um, the questions that the applicant must fill out, um, am I do I assume correctly that there is no physical contact with an applicant if we went the lottery way? I mean, they, I, would, I would fill out a form with a, however many questions there are, and there would be no phone call or there be no face-to-face -face discussion with me. Is that right? My understanding is that if a lottery system is used, um, the initial meeting uh, in front of the commission, that there would be a, a presentation uh, by the applicant or the applicant's representative that would take place at that level. And then once a determination was made by the commission, to determine whether an application met the objective criteria in the ordinance, that application then would enter into the lottery system. If the lottery system is not utilized, then that is just an additional step that is not used, that it ends with the, the commission, and unless somebody decides to file an appeal, but the selection process ends right there. That's where okay. it ends. All right, Madam Mayor, I'll, I'll yield now. I'll, I'll be quiet for a minute. Okay, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, so I got a, a question for Mr. Albright. Other yeah. communities in the Tri-County area, I'm speaking like Wayne County, Ogan County, Macomb County, that have uh, medical marijuana or recreational marijuana for that matter. Um, what kind of systems do you see used, you know, what's the most popular system? That's a good question. I have not taken a poll of various um, uh, communities and what all the different systems uh, that they have used. I know that when we were coming up with our selection process, and it's the current ordinance, 
that that seemed to be the fairest uh, way under the circumstances. The lottery system is something that came up after Sidemus, after the, the current ordinance had been enacted back in June. The lottery system uh, system came up through discussions by city administration thinking, okay, is there an additional level of insulation that we can protect the city from potential liability and make the system as fair as possible? That's all that was. Well, because I would be interested in seeing, I guess, maybe if there's a community that you can find that uses the lottery system and one that's comparable to East Point that is not using the lottery system and is using what we originally proposed, that maybe we could reach out to just to see, or you could reach out to their attorney to see what kind of issues they've had with both systems. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that way we would have that information because we're making, I feel like we're making assumptions, but we don't really have any like detailed facts on either system and how they, you know, how they work and the, the issues that the communities have actually had. Um, when I was in MML over the weekend, I uh, had spoken with some other mayors and the ones that I had spoke to, none of them had used the lottery system. They all were using the, the other system. So that's why I wasn't sure if there was any other communities around us that are using the lottery system. Yeah, I can certainly, um, I can certainly do a check of the various communities in the Tri-County area and then uh, provide uh, the City Council with, with a list of, of, of the communities that uh, do um, have medical marijuana facilities, uh, what selection process do they utilize, and also to see if, um, uh, if their current uh, ordinance is being challenged in court. That'd be great. Sounds good, yeah. Now, as for me, you all know that I don't feel that the medical marijuana is uh, a good image for East Point. So, and all the, the votes, I always voted no. But since it is something that has passed, I do have some say-so in it. So saying that when we did put the ordinance together, when we were talking about limiting some of the, some of the applicants, um, I thought we lessened more applicants by saying one, they have to have be a current um, resident or business owner after so long, so many years. So if you have a business and invested in East Point, because I thought we those point systems were, you know, um, put in place to help us pick a uh, medical marijuana facility. So because it's going to be a lot of people that apply that are, you know, have experience. But I feel like if people have invested in our city for over 10 to 15 years, they should have first rights for residents who live in our city to have, you know, rights in order to be able to own these, these businesses in our city. And also set some aside for minorities. So again, like I said, I'm not for <coughs> facilities, but if we're going to do this, that helps limit some of all these applications and people coming from different cities that don't live in East Point, never did business in East Point, and these businesses that have invested in our city for so mm -hmm. many years, and our residents um, who live in our city who have the experience to be able to invest even more in their city. I think that should limit it. So if we get all these hundreds of applications and 50 of these people who, um, who have businesses and invested over 20 to 25 years, our residents who've been living in the city and grew up in the city and, um, and things like that, they should have you know, adamant rights to, to be millionaires, we, let's tell the truth. These are million, million, million dollar businesses that's coming to our city. And the only people that is um, getting the money from is people who never came to East Point, don't spend money in East Point, but are making money off our city. So those are some of the things that we need to look at and listen to, and to um, when we have, you know, approve and pick these people. I know we're um, trying to do it the best way we can as far as the lottery system. You guys gotta excuse me, I have a cold. But as far as the lottery system goes, we need to pick people based off on they're not only their experience, but how much they have invested in our city. I think that's really important. So uh, I think uh, we need to make sure that that is taken account for. So council, you wanna say anything else? Are we tabling this so that Mr. Albright can do more research on the lottery system? <clears throat> or are we moving forward? Uh, Mayor, yeah, I had one comment though before we, I, I think it seemed like everybody would at least wanna wait till next meeting to make a right. motion on this specific part. Um, but I did have a comment on some of what you were saying and some of what Councilman Curley was saying about the lottery. I'm I'm against the lottery for just 
everybody. If you fill out the application properly and you're just entered into a lottery, I'm against that. I think if there was a scenario where five of the applicants were very good and were only able to give out three licenses, then maybe at that point where it's like you really can't differentiate between the five, then we do a lottery system and three of the people win. But saying that, I think really this relates to how we just do the bid process for anything. So out in an open meeting, we do the bid process, say 10 people apply for something, you know, I don't know, we've got a street sweeper later on the agenda. Say 10 companies uh, gave us their bid. We, in a public meeting, pick the lowest bidder, say it's also the best street sweeper. We buy that one. It's out in the open meeting. I think, to me, the three-person committee that we've we've done, we've got, you know, um, the city manager, dir director of public safety, and uh, building official or economic development director, um, you know, someone can stand in for Ms. Doom also, uh, for the three people, if as long as that's in a public meeting, according to that Judge Marlinga opinion that Mr. Albright shared with us, I think it's fine. If that committee does want to just go with a lottery out of the gate, I think under our current ordinance, I think they could just do a lottery of anybody that um, it, that meets the criteria. I'd recommend against that, but I think at this point it'd be that three-person uh, committee if they want to do something where they narrow it down to a few more than three licenses and then do a lottery, I think they could do that under the ordinance now too. As long as it's in the public meeting, to me it seemed like that was going to be fine. And just like anything we do for a bid for anything else, I think someone else could stew if we, you know, um, the second lowest bidder didn't get the street sweeper. I think uh, technically they could try and sue us. And, you know, it's not like this is unique in the medical marijuana or uh, recreational marijuana industry but i think right now as long as we do it in an open meeting i think they won't you know there wouldn't be a leg to stand on as long as we explain uh what we're doing and pick those uh licenses madam mayor sorry yes yes sir um okay um all right yeah i, I think we should table this i, I would um cardi i would rather table it till the 10th, the Tuesday after the election. Um, Sarah wanted some information about what type of system other cities use. Sarah, you suggested tightening up the, uh, the qualifications again, but I I'm gonna be honest with everybody. That's the only way I can operate the rest of my life. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I came, I, I struggled with this thing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, till I was convinced about why we should not go with the with the intervene that we should go with the ping pong balls in the bucket. Um, now I'm not so sure, but um, I'll make a motion, Madam Mayor, to table this. And if you want to sooner, obviously you won't vote for it. But I would I would move to table this discussion and decision until Tuesday, November 10th. I'll support that. I'm moving in support, call the roll. Any more discussion oh, no, before we move forward? Uh, Madam Mayor? Yes, sir. Um, so the council is requesting that, um, uh, which, how many uh, different cities, or do you want any limitations on which cities I check with? Or are you looking for cities just in the tri-county area, or do we want state, statewide, or do you want a certain number of cities? Uh, just so I have a little guidance in uh, conducting the research. And I will certainly defer to what council uh, instructs me to do. Yes, Lucita. I, I would prefer being, you know, cities comparable to East Point locally within the Tri-County area. Because I think that, you know, it, it, it makes a big difference if you're in a rural area, how you do things compared to inside the city. So I think having, I know like there's multiple cities here that are allowing them, Harrison Township, um, Warren, Berkeley, Royal, or Ferndale, you know, so, cities that are comparable to the size of East Point and like limiting to the number, Hazel Park, I know they offer them, and maybe just kind of see how their selection process has gone, how their administration has done it, just so we have some background information moving forward with making our decision on what's gonna be the best for this ordinance. Thank you, and, and the council would like that information prior to uh, the November meeting? That would be nice. Yeah. Okay. okay, happy to do so, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, just one more, one more thing. One more thing, uh, Cardi. Um, 
I think you're on to something, Carly, with your suggestion ideas. Uh, I would like to have you type that up and give it to the council and give it to the administration, but you've got, you might, you, you could have something there. It's a different than the other ways, but come on, everything should be open. But as I said before, I'm not a happy camper. And if I can request and one you, more thing. And, the administ and, and administration knows why too. And Mr. Curley, let's, um, let's go with Mr. C. I'm done. Sorry. <laughs> one more thing right. no, that's okay. that I'd like to Sorry, okay. the only thing I'd like to request from Mr. Albright is yes. maybe just an example of proposed um, language that you'd want to add into the ordinance if we did decide to go the route, if we could have that also at that time. So hopefully we can wrap this completely up on November in, on the next November 11th meeting, I believe, Mr. Curley. Yeah, um, uh, whatever the second Tuesday is, the 10th. November 10th. November 10th. So we can um, have all that information so we can definitely wrap it up that evening. Yes, thank you. Okay, yeah, that was my question as to how soon, I mean, I guess if we're done that day, I'd be happy, but it, you know, I, I'd like to not see this continue on too much longer. <laughs> You're right about that. All right. Okay, please call the roll. Person Curley. You're muted, Mr. Curley. Councilman Curley. Yes. Now, when it's not when it's time for you to talk, you don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Councilperson oh. Lucido. Yes. Councilperson Demonico. Yes. Councilperson Baker. Yes. Mayor Owens. Yes. Moving right along, because I know that what you said that was nine and ten. That covered nine and ten, right, Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Okay. Sounds good. Moving right along to item number D, to the approval to lease a four-wheel Elgin whirlwind vacuum street sweeper. I know we talked about this a couple of times, and if we have any questions, our director of um, public works, Mr. Abraham, is on the line. If we have any questions, if not, let's get a motion on the floor. Madam Mayor, I do have one motion. Okay. Or one question, I mean, not one motion, one question. Um, you had actually mentioned this a couple of meetings ago when we were talking about the street sweeper. Um, about, and I guess I want Mr. Blum's opinion, if we should be leasing the street sweeper or if we should be loaning Public Works the money from the general fund. Yeah, that is something I put together, uh, was saying, instead of um, the city borrowing money from somewhere else, we can borrow money from ourselves and save, I think it's like 37, and, we, and then we're saving $37,000 on top of interest. Um, good evening, Mr. Blum. Yep, good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, yeah, we brought this up a couple different times. Um, the option to purchase the sweeper and then set up a loan between general fund and the motor pool uh, with a rate of interest uh, is an option. We can set the rate lower than the lease payment. Um, with the current investments that are out there, um, we, the general fund would actually earn more money loaning it to the motor pool. Um, so it's kind of a win-win for both entities. Um, but yeah, there's there's nothing that would prohibit the the purchase and then uh, a loan between the two funds to be set up versus the uh, the lease scenario. I personally would prefer to buy it and do the loan. Do the loan outside of East Point. Mr. No, Blum? I'm saying we 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 would buy the the uh, street sweeper and loan the money from general fund to the motor pool. Okay. That would good. be my preference. Mine as well. Um, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, so just real quick. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to make a motion on this, even though and I would like to, I know Mr. Abrams has worked very hard on this. Some of the information he gave us wasn't necessarily very accurate when I was trying to research some of them, but I did find one municipality um in 2019 that did purchase from this fund so if everyone is ready i, I will go ahead and make a motion motion sure and i i just have a, a comment too but i am comfortable moving forward okay did you okay let's move forward um i need a motion and support then um uh, madam mayor i will motion for the general fund to loan the motor pool the money to go ahead with the purchase 
of a four wheel egg line wind, whirlwind vacuum street sweeper at the amount of $276,313.20. I'll support that. And then Mayor, if you didn't mind, I just had a quick comment. Yes, please go with your comment. Thank you. Um, so yeah, as we, as we said here, I think we kind of went a roundabout way about learning about this uh, purchase. So today I, you know, I look back in Mitten and I, I do see now um, that the city of Rochester Hills did put this RFP into Mitten. Uh, this is back on, it's dated what, September 1st, 2016. And uh, so it is in Mitten. And the second item is you can see, and I think you got to go back into like the legacy system. Two companies did bid on that and Bell Equipment Company was the one awarded that bid. This is all, I think, information we were not, uh, that was not very clear up until I just learned that today. And then the third item is, so Council, well, Mayor Pro Tem Lucido, she found one that was bought under that. And I also, I found a different um, township. I found Bloomfield Township that bought one. Wasn't technically under that, same contract, unfortunately, uh, the one that Mayor Pro Tem Lucido said was, but it was from the same company and they ended up getting three bids and Bell Equipment was also the lowest bid. So with all that information, essentially, I'm comfortable that we do have a low bid here. It was through Mitten and we are purchasing the right thing. I do also like that we're uh, doing the loan from the general fund to the motor pool fund. So I think I uh, like that and uh, that's all I had, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you both for doing that additional research and thank you, Director Abraham, for what you've done as well. We have motion and support. Please call the roll. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. Moving right along, the request by the East Point Advocates supporting equality for a space to erect a sculpture at Kennedy Park. Um, the liaison for, I know the park is Ms. Lucido and we have Mr. Sasek, who's on the Parks Commission as well. I'm gonna start off with Mayor Pro Tem. I know she works hand in hand with the Mayor Pro Tem. So Madam Mayor, this group, um, I believe they're, yes, it's EASE, it's East Point Advocates for Supporting Equality. Um, they did come to the Parks Commission meeting and they did propose that they are interested in erecting a sculpture at Kennedy Park. And I know we did kind of touch on this at our last meeting. We didn't go like really in depth in the conversation. Um, I, th I think right now, I'm not really sure why, I mean, I, it's on the agenda again, and I think they're looking for it because they want to start fundraising. But I think that we need to, as a council, decide if we have any questions for them and what they need to provide us before we go through, before we go forward with um, actually approving them to put this at, this sculpture up in the park. So I think um, they're looking for us to have that discussion so we can um, give them the information so they know what we need to make a solid motion on allowing them to do this. Okay, council, have any questions about this particular subject? And what part, they said Kennedy Park, what made them uh, choose that park out of all the parks that we have? Um, I believe their reason was just because it's center, center, it's like located in the center of the city, like the most of the, the center of the city. Um, and it's one of our larger parks and they want to make sure that a lot of people have the ability to see it, you know, um, in the public because some of our smaller parks are not used by like the whole community, unlike Kennedy Park or Spindler Park or Memorial Park that is used by like more of the whole whole community. Okay. I think I would like to as a um, entrance to the city of East Point, just to show when you come into our city, this is what we're about, you know, um, or even the downtown park, the downtown East Point, that would have been nice too. Council, do you have any other ideas or comments? Well, my Interest? understanding, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, How are you doing? Yeah, they, um, my understanding was that really, I mean, unless I misunderstood something, that they were looking for just the okay for a space um, uh, in Kennedy Park. And 
you know, this is something that they came up with and, you know, they're really a champion. Um, so for me, I, I feel like I have enough information about it, but I, I can't speak on behalf of, you know, everyone else. But, uh, I mean, I'm comfortable with it as the, as it's presented. And, I mean, I would be okay with moving forward with it. But, you know, of course, that's a vote of, of counsel. So, um, to me, I think that's all that they were really looking for was just, uh, you know, they were going to take care of all the particulars about it. They just needed the okay for the space. And uh, they were looking for a council to approve, uh, you know, uh, use of, of uh, land in Kennedy Park. We're at um, Councilman Baker. I know in Kennedy Park, but we're at what, what section, what area? Uh, if I remember from what I read, it was said the, I believe the southeast corner, which is kind of like right there at the intersection where the, uh, the uh, flashing red light is. That way, no matter which way you come from, which, are, which way you're going, you will, everyone can see it. Yeah, Madam Mayor. Yes, sir, Councilman Carlin. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, Rob's got a, Rob's right in all, everything he said. Uh, all they're doing, this group is asking to have space at Kennedy Park. They're gonna raise the money themselves. They're not asking the city for money. Um, that's the space they chose and that's the space that we ought to uh, recognize that that's where they wanna put it and say, okay. So, you know, I, I, I'm not sure what other kind of questions you want to ask this group. They're anxious to get started. If they're going to raise that much money, they're going to get, have to get started soon. So, you know, if we have a group of citizens who want to be involved in the city. And I agree with Rob. Let's just go ahead and say, fine, go. Madam Mayor. Oh, Ms. Lucido. Yes. Um, so I do have one, one question, I guess. Um, so when the DIA um, worked with the Arts and Cultural Diversity Commission to put up their mural on the side of East Point Community Credit Union, mm -hmm. I know that had to go through the Planning Commission for approval. Um, so I, I'm fine with, you know, telling them that, yes, if, if approved by the Planning Commission, the design concept, I would be fine with allowing them to put it up at Kennedy Park, but I really think it does need to get approval from the Planning Commission before we before we move forward on this. I but agree. Want, I agree. I think we need to do things in order. And I know Councilman um, Curley made a, a point saying that if they want to put something somewhere, let them do it. That's not how uh, things work. Just because someone, somebody wants to put something wherever they want in our city, that's not how it works. It has to be, you know, approved. It has to be fitting for our city. And that's how that works. So we have to ask questions. So anybody that doesn't just come in our seat and say, let's put something right there, it doesn't fit. So that, that's not how Madam we want to start working. Hi. Madam Mayor, if I could interject. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I do see that Mary Hall Rayford is also available. Um, when they came to us at, at the Parks Commission, when they did their proposal that was in your packet last month, uh, for the last meeting, um, we also they also included a rough draft of what the sculpture itself will look like. Uh, they came to us, and the reason Kennedy Park was chosen again was because it is centrally located. It's also where, when we are allowed to have parades, and that the parades are finished. And this is more appropriate, showing that we are a unified community. And we, we picked a small piece of, pro, of land in the park that's facing Stevens. And it's in an area that really doesn't have any picnic tables. There's not a lot of trees, but it's near the gazebo. So that it becomes a focal part within the, the part of the park itself. The, we did think of downtown development possibly with the median or that, but that's not to say somewhere down the road if D dot comes through or M dot comes through and says they're taking the median out, it would be lost. Um, this is just to show that we're a unified community. And we did, when at the last meeting, you did mention that we should contact the Arts Diversity Commission. And uh, we did, I, my understanding is, they did talk to um, Ms. Diebolt, and just to give them a heads up of what we were projecting in that. And 
they do want to include a mural, and I believe there was uh, hope that they would be able to use the same artist that did the mural in the children's garden. Um, fundraising is going to be very crucial, and that's why they're hoping to get approval. Uh, I think back to the disc golf group when they came before the Parks Commission in the city also, and they wound up utilizing a lot of city property for their disc golf and this group is just asking for a small piece of property and thank you for your time and hearing me out thank you mr Sasek. yeah uh, i think all the council wants this done i think we're happy about any group coming into our city showing you know equality and, and want a space to, to show what we're about as a city but what i was going to say was i want to go back to what the mayor pro tem was saying about doing a um planning commission starting with the planning commission like we do anybody else that has something that they want to put in our city we want to uh do it in order so maybe the planning commission arts and cultural um commission and have a you know a meeting together with the planning commission and talk about what they're trying to do and things like that may i interject here somewhat um yes state your name please I, this is Mary Hall Rayford. Okay. How you and doing, Rayford? One of the things that we wanted to do was to make sure that this was a residence project uh, pushed forward by the residents and for the most part maintained uh, to some degree uh, with the efforts that we're planning to do. Uh, Mr. Fairbrother, if you have the last sketch that we submitted and could put that on the shared screen so people would could see what we're talking about. We're talking about a space of about four feet uh, wide, five feet tall. So and it's not like we're asking to give the land to us. We're asking for space to put a gift to the city. And we are all residents of the city. We understand that, but we just want to go through the, the channels that any other person would do with the planning commission. Ms. Lucido, thank yeah, you, Ms. Reiser. I'm, I'm completely fine with them going forward with the project. I just really want to make sure that we have an accurate, um, before they actually build anything, especially, like, I just want to make sure we have an accurate vision of exactly what it's going to be, what the mural is going to look like before they actually put it up in our park. I think that it's important that the Planning Commission and City Council approves all of those details before they actually put it up. I would be, I would be okay with probably if they wanted, if we wanted to do a, a motion saying that, you know, as long as it, you know, the specs or the design gets approved by the Planning Commission and then by City Council that, you know, we would be fine with them, you know, putting it up at, at Kennedy Park. Can I get support on that motion? I like that motion. So I do have one question. Um, because the, the um, sketch in, uh, was included in our packet, um, like I've, I've seen what it looks like. So I guess just for clarity um, from Councilwoman Lucido, um, like, uh, how much more information would you need about the, as far as approving the design, because there was a, a sketch included. So I, I just want to make sure that I'm so, understanding correctly. So all I have in my packet, and I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm missing something, is this sketch right here. But I uh, believe it's supposed to be on a pedestal and have a mural. Yeah, the mural, there's nothing, something. there's nothing, um, um, no design concept for the mural yet. I mean, they could, you know, who's to say what they're going to put on there. I, I think it needs to all be approved you know, a complete project concept needs to be approved before they actually go ahead and put it up because, I mean, we, we need to ensure that it's appropriate before we go ahead with approving for them to put a mural up in our park. Okay. And in this that we're um, discussing right now, this is for both the sculpture and the mural, not just the sculpture itself. <laughs> That's the impression that I was under from reading what was given to us from the group. But we're just talking about the sculpture right now. The mural hasn't been presented to us. So let's just talk about one thing at a time, the sculpture and the people that 
are on here, Mr. Sasek and uh, Ms. Um, Rafer, to, you know, um, I think they want us to focus on this. And then when Mrs. Dybal comes with her and the Arts Commission lets us know about this mural, we can go and talk about that too. Well, so, I, the reason why, I'm, I'm sorry, Mayor. What do you think, Mr. Baker, Councilman Baker? The, the reason why I asked, because I was under the impression that it was just the sculpture that we were talking about. And perhaps um, one of the members of EASE can, can clarify if this is sculpture and mural or just the sculpture, because if it's just a sculpture, I'm okay with moving forward with it, but maybe they can uh, just let us know. Uh, Ms. Rayford? It's, it is just for the sculpture because that's where the, the space, the mural itself, once we decided uh, what to do, it's going to appear on the base of the sculpture. So it's not in the additional space. Okay, thank you. So we just wanna um, go forward with the motion. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Thank you, Ms. Rayford. Madam uh, Mayor? Yes, sir. If I could interject, I just wanted to let you know that um, about four pages after the image that you were looking at before is the complete package that Ms. Hall Rayford was referring to. And if you'd like me to share my screen now, I can share it and show you um, the entire sculpture. Well, the whole point of it, Mr. Fairbrother, is we want the Planning Commission. We didn't say we didn't approve it. We want them to assist us. Yes, ma'am. Approving it. So we got a motion on the floor. Okay. So it's not that we have a motion on the floor. So do we get support on that? Yeah, can we just Madam Mayor, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm not really sure what the motion is. I know I think you said you were fine with my motion, but my motion yeah. that where I had said then I did not include the planning commission. So I'm I thought you said your motion was to send it to planning commission if it's approved by planning commission. And council that we will approve this. I thought that was your motion. No, was it uh, that's fine. I can. I, that, I just wanted to clarify because it was kind of in the middle of a conversation when it. <laughs> so. But I'm look. I'm half sick, so look. I want to make sure I'm. I'm. I'm saying things right. That was that right. So yeah. I, well, okay. I would. I would. I would make a motion to let them present this to the planning commission for approval for for design approval. And that's just for the sculpture. And then we're going to get more information the from the Arts Commission. Okay. Can I get support on that? <clears throat> sure, I'll support that. Moving and supporting and that information that um, Ms. Uh, Rayford had supplied, we'll look more into that. But I, I feel like it's going to go forward. I think everything looks beautiful. And I want to say, everybody who has something to do with this, I want to say thank you. That's huge. Huge. Uh, we have a motion and support. Please call the roll. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Now we are at reports from administration. We're going to start with our city manager, Ms. Doom. Good evening, Ms. Doom. Good evening, Mayor. Um, I do have a few things for everyone. The census is wrapping up their um, counts by about October 31st. And I do give council and the mayor updates on a weekly basis to let them know where we're standing. We're currently reporting at 79%. Um, that's good, but it could be better. So I, I'd like to put out a public message to everyone. Please, if you have not completed the census, please do so. It'll make a huge difference to the community in so many ways and so many programs. I'll keep you updated all the way through the month and we'll see how uh, East Point fares. Um, also today I received uh, some interesting information from the governor's office. Tomorrow is energy efficiency day. It uh, kind of rolls out a health climate plan where the state the goals of the state are to be carbon neutral by 2050. So we'll see how that works. Um, that's always a very, very good goal to reach for the health of uh, all of our residents in the state. Um, we have got, let's see, what have I got? Oh, we've had several water main breaks, small ones this week. So, and we hear right away from residents when their water's a little bit cloudy or if the uh, pressure's a little bit low. So nothing major, they've all been pretty much repaired. Um, if you have uh, some additional questions, Mr. Abraham can certainly give you more detail. And I know that many of you have seen and commented on um, the East Point votes. 
that com site, uh, the logo, and you see the flags that are up. And uh, there'll be some advertising twice this month uh, of uh, Get Out the Vote for East Pointers. And October 22nd, there will be a town hall uh, webinar for ranked choice voting to help people understand how it works. And also there'll be a mailing list sent out to all of the households, again, East Point Votes, encouraging people to get out and vote. And um, I can say that the absentee ballots are coming in very, very strong. People are dropping them in the box that is outside. They're dropping them into the box that's attached to our building. And many people are just as comfortable coming in uh, to the building and handing them to our staff. So the staff is extremely busy. Um, this is a, a very important election, a very busy election for everyone. So that is um, what I have for this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Doom, um, Councilman DeMonica? Sure. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, I guess one comment too, I just want everyone to make sure they know with what you said, Ms. Doom, the East Point Votes, that whole campaign is grant funded by a private foundation. I know that was a question on our Facebook page. It's not coming out of our general fund or your taxes. It's a private foundation, so it's not even your federal taxes or anything like that. It's private donors. So we wouldn't be doing that otherwise. And I think it's a great uh, program <laughs> and <laughs> glad, glad to see well how much grant funding we got for that. So thanks, Ms. Doom. And um, I wanted to ask, I guess, I don't know if you'd know, but 79% um, sounds great. I know we're a little ahead of uh, 10 years ago, but of course, no one stopped responding to the census. That's not at all what I'm saying. But how many um, vacant properties do we expect? Do we, are we expecting like 15% more to respond or 20? Um, you, you know, do I don't have idea? those. I know I don't have those statistics from the Census Bureau. I, I I'll check with them each week. Um, overall, countrywide, uh, you know, throughout the entire United States, uh, it's very, very high. And even for Michigan, we're high. But um, just as a little challenge out there, some of our neighbors are in the 80s. Uh, yeah. Some of the gross points are, and I think we certainly can be also if people just get out the word to each other. It takes all of five minutes. Simply type in, you don't even need a website. You just go to the internet, type in census. It'll pop up and allow you to just take, answer those few questions. Um, and the census workers are still out trying to reach people that they believe still live at their homes or, uh, perhaps haven't answered. So they're still hard at work too. So I, I really anticipate we'll be in the 80s, low 80s. But um, I feel a little competition. I know the mayor has mentioned before, she feels a little competitive. And uh, I'm, I agree with her, we'd like to be number one in Macomb County with reporting. So we're not there yet. So please everyone um, help us. And thank you, Cardi, for um, sharing that all of the, these efforts for Get Out the Vote are not funded by taxpayer dollars. There are a lot of organizations out there who are very interested in people just getting to the polls and voting, uh, absentee voting. And so it's very appreciated to have a nonpartisan, you know, donors give communities money to help them get out the vote and people just, you know, make their voices be heard. So thank you for bringing that up. I think that's very important that people know this. Sure. And uh, one more comment about the census. This, it, census. If anyone sees their neighbors, I've seen some houses where there's still like a note on the front door or something. Obviously, some of those properties are going to be vacant. But if you see a neighbor with just a note still on the door, you know, knock on their door, let them know, get, make sure all your neighbors have responded if, uh, if it's not a vacant property. Well, it is $1,800 per person that comes back to the community for programs for schools, lunches, seniors, roads it goes on and on and on so that is money that we've all paid for through our you know our own taxes and it's money coming back to us for use in our community so if people recognize that it, it's simply giving back our own money that we've paid into the pot for so we can improve our community i, I hope that you know encourages a few more people to take those few minutes to uh, take the census and then I just had one more item, the properties on Kelly, I think if we signed an agreement, can that be forwarded to city council about those uh, commercial properties on Kelly that we had? We certainly can. We do have Kim Holman on with us and uh, if, if council wishes, she can step in 
and just give a little bit of information on the Kelly properties or have her speak separately when we go through our um, you know, administration reports. Sounds good. Um, she can send us all that information. What would you okay. like me to talk? Okay. Well, and so I do know, I mean, it's been a very busy weekend as I'm sure everybody knows with uh, the Michigan Supreme Court and the governor's ruling and all these different things going on. And I know we did get quite a few emails um today and yesterday so i don't know if i did miss it maybe um but yeah i guess if some information can be forwarded that's fine yes please um again since um mr Devon oh i'm sorry were you done councilman demonico yes okay thank you i want to say thank you to the organization that partnered up with um, um with east point good job mr fairbrother for um doing that work i always want to make sure I thank those who are behind the scenes and making sure East Point looks good. Um, and also the clerks and people that work elections, thank you for all the hard work that you're doing, Ms. Doom, for working um, so hard with that part. And also the census that occurred, Mayor Pro Tem, um, nobody came out like we wanted to when we um, did the gift cards and Macomb, um, Macomb County helping us with that, assisting us with the gift cards to get to our community to make sure that they filled out the census, they got a gift card. Uh, I believe no one came, but we tried and we did our part. That's all I can say. As long as we're doing our part, if no one shows up, we did our part. And also, um, the event I did with Foot Locker, where we did the census, got people registered to vote, and worked with the Macomb County Clerk's Office doing that, and several businesses and several um, organizations that helped me to do that as well. So we're doing our part as a council, as a city and as a county, and um, I wanna thank everybody who's, who's been a part of that. Uh, moving right along, um, we have our Director of Finance, Mr. Blum. Good evening again. Good evening again. Yes, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, I only have one topic uh, tonight, just a reminder for the residents that uh, October 21st is the cutoff to make payments for anything that's going to end up rolling on to the winter taxes as delinquent. Uh, if you remember, we did not roll anything on for the summer taxes, uh, so there are quite a few items hanging out there, um, and we we really can't delay it any longer. I mean, we've got you know snow removal from 18 months ago that still hasn't been paid, that kind of stuff. So um, it will happen, um, and the 21st of October is the cutoff. So just a PSA for the night. And then, if you have any questions, go ahead. Any questions for Director Blum? Anyone? Thank you, Mr. Blum. Okay. Moving forward to our um, <clears throat> moving forward to uh, Mr. Albright, our city attorney. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, members of Council. Um, <clears throat> Council Member uh, DeMonico touched on the uh, Michigan Supreme Court ruling uh, that came down last Friday, which uh, held unconstitutional uh, uh, Governor Whitmer's executive orders uh, since uh, April 30th of this year. And naturally, uh, concerns were, okay, how is this going to affect um, uh, public bodies uh, continuing to meet uh, via Zoom? Uh, Attorney General uh, Dana Nessel determined or held uh, this past Sunday that uh, her office was not going to be enforcing the uh, executive orders. And I know that there has been a lot of discussion, okay, is the uh, Supreme Court order going to be uh, enforced uh, uh, beginning uh, October 30th, or is there a 14-day uh, reconsideration time period for uh, the governor to file a motion to reconsider? And so there are all these different uh, viewpoints and opinions going on. I did contact uh, MML yesterday and left a message and Mary from the MML contacted me and let me know that there is a, a bipartisan legislation that is pending. And I know that uh, Mr. DeMonico also uh, circulated uh, an email to that effect. Uh, when that uh, legislation is going to be passed uh, remains to be seen, but I would imagine uh, in light of the COVID-19 continuing pandemic, the fact that many municipalities uh, continue uh, and certainly want to uh, meet uh, remotely, um, I think that this uh, bipartisan legislation will probably be passed here in the relatively near future. 
So that would allow the city council to continue to meet uh, via Zoom and also uh, the planning commission and the uh, zoning uh, board of appeals. So I'll keep the council apprised of um, any updates regarding uh, the status of that uh, legislation. But uh, I would say based on the fact that uh, it does have bipartisan support uh, that it will pass and it will permit uh, Zoom uh, meetings and, and uh, to continue um, if there is a declared uh, local or statewide uh, emergency. So that's certainly good news uh, for the council to continue to meet. I know that the council uh, wishes to continue to do so and that legislation would allow them to uh, continue to do that. And uh, Madam Mayor, I just have our, uh, our monthly status report that was circulated previously to the city council. I'm happy to uh, uh, answer any questions uh, regarding that or any other questions that uh, the members may have. Any questions for our city attorney, Councilman DeMonico? Yeah, just one quick question, Mr. Albright. Um, yes. How, how long then do you think we have to meet without legislation passing uh, virtually? I think that, uh, I think, and that's certainly a good question. Uh, the answer to that question is no one knows. <laughs> at this point and because no one knows i really do think that the legislature will move as quickly as humanly possible to get that uh, legislation passed the fact that it does have bipartisan support that certainly uh, is a good thing and I, I think because of that 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 should happen relatively quickly hopefully uh here within the coming weeks okay. um, but i know that a lot of municipalities continue to use uh, the zoom platform or a comparable uh networking uh, tools. So uh, the legislature recognizes that uh, COVID-19 is certainly has not been eradicated. And so uh, with the uh, the growing infection rates that uh, everyone is aware of, you know, we get these on a daily basis. Uh, so there are certainly that uh, concern. So I, I think that it'll be sh uh, shortly. But as soon as that happens, I will uh, contact both uh, council and city administration uh, and provide copies of that legislation once it's been passed. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Mayor, and that's all, that's, that's all I had, Madam Mayor. Again, I'm happy to answer any additional questions any of the council members have. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Albright. You're welcome. Um, we have new business, item A, the approval of results of adjacent owner to purchase vacant lot sales program, September 16, 2020 deadline. Council. Madam Mayor, I'll motion to authorize the city administration to finalize the sale of each of the tax reverted vacant lots to the winning bidder based upon the closed session bid results as follows. 24850 Brittany, 2-14-29-128-013, to Mr. and Mrs. Lewis, $289.03. 24665 Flower, 214-31-27-019, Tamela Harvey, $1,817.59. 21353 Beaconsfield, 2-14-32427-030, Mr. and Mrs. Morris, for in the amount of $1,786.92, and further authorize the city manager to execute all necessary documents related to the sales. Support. Moved and supported. All those that won that bid, congratulations. Thank you, Council. Thank you. We have a motion to support. Please call the roll. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Item B approval to increase the amount of contract for resurfacing. We have, again, the director. Uh, Mr. Abraham, if you have any further questions on this. Council. Madam Madam Mayor, I will motion to approve an increase of $138,000 to the contract with Cadillac Asphalt LLC to complete the resurfacing of the following streets. Roxana, Stevens to Haas, Holland, Wilmot to Roslyn, Stricker, Virginia to Shakespeare, and Stricker, Cushing to David. Support. Any questions or comments or anything? Sure. Thank you. Mayor, I had one, okay. one quick question about the um, about the thickness of the asphalt. Um, it sounded like there was a difference between us and the engineers. Are we doing a different thickness 
from the original plans or I was just curious to understand that that part a little better. I'm definitely in favor of doing the right thing for these roads, but if Mr. Abraham or whoever could answer that, that'd be helpful. Director Abraham, good evening. Can't hear you, sir. Can't hear you. Oh, you were unmuted for a second. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Good evening. Yes, sir. Good evening, Madam Mayor, um, respected Councilman. Um, yes, there is a difference between what the engineers initially proposed and then what I have instructed the engineers to do. That is one of the reasons for the increase in the contract amount. Uh, when the engineers put the design together, they thought, as in the past, they could use about an inch and a half to two inches of asphalt. And then I found that the problem what we are seeing out there on the asphalt streets where the asphalt simply got peeled off over the course of years because in the past we used an inch and a half to two inches or less than that on the streets when they paved it. And that is an unprofessional way to uh, resurface a street and then it won't last. So I have instructed the engineers to make sure that we use one and a half to two inches of asphalt on the leveling course. That is the first application. And later on, and another one and a half inches of wearing course or the final course of material for a total of three to three and a half inches of asphalt. And that will last at least 20, 25 years easily and the asphalt will not get peeled off. So the two classes of material or the two courses of material we are using are heavy duty asphalt material. One, uh, both are heavy duty and both are different type. The leveling course and the wearing course are two different uh, type of material. So again, uh, to answer your question, Councilman, yes, there was a different, there is a difference and then the reason why we are adding additional material is to make sure that the street lasts longer and the asphalt simply don't get peeled off as we are seeing on our streets now. Okay, and I'd assume that's for all four streets? Then, right? For all four sections, I should say it's three different streets? Yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Director. We have thank a motion. You. Thank you. We have motion and support. Please follow the roll. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Moving right along, we have one more thing. Just stay, stay right there, Director Abraham, because you're coming up again on item D. But um, first, we're going to do the bid award for the integrated body and patrol vehicle camera system with video data storage management. Um, we have Director Rohit on the phone, on the Zoom call. I'm here, Madam Mayor. How are you, sir? I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. Trying to feel better. But um, I'll get better soon. But um, now we were with this bid award, and um, you want to explain to council the, the three bids? We have three bids, correct? Yeah, what I was going to do is open up with uh, Mr. Fairbrother was going to do like an introductory. And um, if anyone had any questions in respect to the different uh, um, the different items that the companies bid on, they can. I, I'm, I'm sure I can help them on that. So. Does council have any questions? Um, I, Mayor Pro Tem? I have enough information to move forward with a motion whenever everyone's ready. Me is I have I have enough information as well. Uh, Councilman DeMonico, I'm here. Councilman DeMonico, Councilman Curley, you as well. I'm fine. Yes. Okay. Well, that's I I, I think so. sorry, Madam Mayor. I think I just have one uh, question, which I think is somewhat easy i mean i think the um it was a very good presentation from axon the recommended bidder and i think all the information is really good answers all the questions um and the price actually i think is 
lower, I don't know, lower than I thought it was going to be for the five years. Uh, I don't know if that's what everyone else thought. So I was happy about that. But what does like, what does year six look like? I'm just curious, like much further down the line, is it essentially, um, is it all baked in for the five years? It's like 50 grand a year or what's, what's year six look like? Well, th this is a, Mr. DeMonico. One of the things I mentioned before is this is going to be a non ending process. So we're going to um, put money away every year. This would be easy to budget for. Um, after the fifth year, we're going to have new. Th the nice thing about uh, Axon is you get new cameras after two and a half years. This, these are body cameras now. You get new cameras after the two and a half years, and you get new body cameras after the fifth year. And after the fifth year, you also get all new in car cameras. If you compare that with the other companies, uh, one company didn't even offer that, and, and the other company only bid on 15 body cameras instead of 30, so that, that price is, is a lot higher. Um, but in respect uh, to your question, I guess it would all depend on if we're gonna keep the same amount of body cameras, which we probably will, 30. We may, you could also increase them to another unit, like if we wanted the detectives to wear them, on certain scenes and um, also if we increased our fleet uh, with our patrol cars which I think uh, we have ample patrol cars I, I think it's going to always stay at 15. I mean the only thing that would change basically is the um, is the, the data storage cost that could go up after five years and obviously uh, both sets of cameras can go up and one thing that's not in here is uh, we talked about grant opportunities um, the DC Kaiser is going to look into a wrap grant and right now they're offering $250 per body camera. They will pay up to $1,500 per in-car camera and they will pay 10% of the total data storage fee each year of the contract. So every year they would pay up to 10%, but we'd have to apply every year for that 10%. So there is a, uh, grant money available but they will not award any kind of grant money until we move forward with this and we would have to supply them with an invoice and they meet with their commission and they decide whether or not they're going to award the grant okay thank you yeah i think i i got i don't know where i got cut off but i think you answered all my questions my zoom dropped for a second um and we, so you were saying basically fifty thousand a year is that what we were saying I think the, the first year it's um, they're requesting at least 10% down the first year but the way they gave it to me the first year is going to be roughly a hundred thousand dollars we'd have to pay mm -hmm. and then year two three four and five it would be 51 51,870 per year okay and then that like if once we get to year six it'd be the same or did we need to buy well year anything? six obviously we will not need any new um we will not need any new uh, body cameras because we're gonna get them in year five and we okay. will not need any new in-car cameras. So basically we're gonna be paying for d uh, data storage fees. Okay, all right, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, thank you for those answers. You're welcome. Great question, Councilman. Thank you, Director. So, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, yes. you put a motion uh, there. Well, I will motion to award a five-year contract base on the best value to Axon Enterprise Incorporated for integrated body and patrol vehicle camera system with video data storage management. The total purchase price is $306,923.14 with a 5% contingency and to amend the budget accordingly, which shall include the new access points. Support. Moved and supported, please call the roll. Councilperson Lucido. Yes. Councilperson Baker. Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Thank Next you, Council. Thank you, sir. Next item is item D, sidewalk and driveway approach replacement program. The director, uh, Abraham, is still on here if you have any questions. If not, you can move with a motion. Madam Mayor? Yes, sir. I would move to declare the necessity for and directs the construction, repair, and reconstruction of any sidewalk or driveway approach in any street in front 
of or a journey to private property bounded by Nine Mile Road on the north, Eight Mile Road on the south, city limits on the east and west of Boulder, Glander, and Gratiot per the attached 2021 sidewalk replacement map as required by Section 38-79 for the city ordinance and authorize the city manager to give notice by November 1st, 2020. Support. Any questions on this for the director, Councilman DeMonica? Well, more of a thank you, Mayor, uh, more for everyone else. I was just wondering if, I, I'm just concerned, especially with, well, as of Friday, it's very unpredictable what's uh, going on with these emergency orders. And it looked like some of that was unemployment. I just didn't w want to put a, a burden on anyone if unemployment benefits are actually cut because of the emergency order being ended. I was just wondering if maybe we can just table this for like a meeting. I have a feeling we'd know kind of where more where we're at by next meeting. Um, and if we're back to normal, I think then it it's more of a um, something that everyone would be expecting. Um, and you know, the unemployment I think is hopefully helped everyone in East Point get by and would be able to uh, pay for the uh, sidewalk program. Just was wondering what everyone thought. Mr. Co Madam Mayor, Mr. Councilman, can I clarify one thing? Oh, sure. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Madam Mayor, respected council, this resolution is as per section 3879 of the city ordinance that uh, by November 1st, the city manager has to give notice to the property owners uh, that they have uh, basically three choices to replace the disrepaired uh, sidewalk and driveway approaches in front of uh, their house or or in their property we are not we are not sending any bills now to the property owner or this resolution doesn't mean that we are going to send a bill to the property owners by november first so most likely only by next year around this time the property owners will be uh, getting an invoice so they have ample time uh, to pay if at all we replace a sidewalk i'm sorry if at all we replace a sidewalk uh, they will have ample time to pay the bill okay okay yeah we could i guess if we needed to we could adjust something at that point if for some reason things uh, didn't go as expected okay exactly all right, Thank then you. i i think that sounds good then great point councilman you on point tonight. Good job. Um, do we have a motion on the floor? Mm -hmm. yes. Motion and support. We did. Motion and support. Please call the roll. All right. I have motion maker Curley, supported by Baker. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Lacido? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes, next item is the reappointment to East Point Housing Authority. Madam Mayor, I'll motion to confirm the city manager's reappointment of Craig Wadakwi with a term to expire October 1st, 2025 to the East Point Housing Authority. Support. support. Moved and supported. I work um, with Mr. Wadakwi and he is a hard worker in the city of East Point. Whether he's on a commission or not, he always does a lot of volunteering. So thank you for what you've done. Mr. Wudecki, I don't know if he's on the line or not, but I'm saying thank you personally from East Point as well. So we have a motion in support. Call the roll. Councilperson Lacido? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. The next discussion is for a possible motion of council's request to have background information on names brought forth for board and commission appointments. This was um, a conversation brought by Mayor Pro Tem Lucido and Councilman DeMonico. Um, you guys wanna, I wanna start with Mayor Pro Tem on this discussion on the request to, maybe it's just a discussion to request to have background information for people who wanna join the boards and commission. Yes, so I believe Mr. DeMonico was the one that originally brought this idea to the table um well when we had the discussion um 
I, I just think that it would be nice to um, have the name of the people that we are going to, or we are interested in recommending to a point prior to our meetings. So if we have, want to be, have, you know, other commissioners can reach out, contact them along with the mayor. And if the mayor has been putting up a recommendation for a name, council has the ability to reach out to that person and contact them, you know, to talk to them before. So we know who we're approving to be on these boards and commissions. Um, I think before we could, we could approve anything, we would have to um, update all of our boards and commissions um, bylaws. Okay, so have we ever done this before? No. Uh, I think Councilman DeMonaco, um, I know you want to speak on this too. Have we ever done this before? Did the background information on people on boards and commissions? Well, I think in uh, Mayor Pro Tem, if you, uh, I think you mean just have the um, application and their name on Friday um, in the packet. Okay. Yes, think, that's all I would be interested in. I don't need any background information. I know yeah. back... I, re I believe at one time there they used to check the make sure they were registered voters before they were mm -hmm. um, put on a board and commission. But I, other than that, I don't think there was any, any other background information that was ever given. Okay. Yeah, and I think uh, that was all. And I think I think even um, you know, Mr. Albright, I, um, if you could comment, there's an appointment section of the. Um, let's see, uh, division one, uh, where am I? I didn't print, I think I, I had enough of time, but there's an area with the boards and commissions. I don't know what section it is now, but um, under there, there is an appointment section, which is section 2-346 of that part. I was just curious if um, council be interested, we could just put into that part of the ordinance that anyone being appointed to the board um, be put into the agenda and their um, their application be put into the agenda, you know, or else we'd have to like override it during approval of the agenda if there was someone we needed to appoint last minute or something like that. We could we could um, ask Mr. Albright to make an amendment like that and bring it forward at, at the next meeting or whenever he's able to put that together. Council Member DeMonico, what section was that again? I'm sorry. Uh, 2-346. Um, I think I searched commissions and then mm -hmm. um, So what you're saying is if it's not in, on the agenda before we have the council meeting to override it, is that what you're saying, the applicant? Yes, yeah, kind of just be consistent with what we've done just with the agenda um, in general. For instance, when I, um, if you don't mind, Mayor, I'm sorry. Um, yes, ma'am. If, like, before I made my selection for the Ethics Commission, because we all got to choose one person, I called multiple, you know, applications beforehand and, you know, had the opportunity to talk to them. Um, to kind of see what you know, they're, why they were interested, you know, things like that. Um, it's, it would be nice if it's someone that I'm not familiar with that I've never met in the city because there's 30,000 residents in the city to have that ability to call them on you know Saturday or Monday before our meeting and you know just introduce myself, talk, chat with them for a minute before approving the appointment on on at the meeting. I don't see nothing wrong with that. Council, okay. any more discussion on this? I just motion that we bring uh, that Mr. Albright put something together for us next meeting as long as he's got no further questions for us. You want to so put what? something? I'm sorry, um, you want to put something? Now, what did you exactly want him to put in there, Councilman DeMonaco? I think just that any appointments or reappointments to boards or commissions be included with the agenda on the Friday before the Tuesday meeting, um, along with the application of that board or commission number. Does that really have to be in a, in a, okay, let's go ahead with it. I don't, I don't really see the big deal of putting that in there, but you feel like there's something that is important to you in the council. 
Because I, I, I don't feel like after all these years that that has to be put in policy or anything like that. But we can move forward to that. I'll support Madam Mayor, Madam, Madam Mayor, if I could, so Council Member uh, DeMonaco, so any appointments or reappointments, um, what kind of information needs to be included um, by that the Friday before the Tuesday meeting? I didn't catch that. Uh, just their application that they fill out. Application? Just okay. the regular application. Yeah, the regular application we ask all the board and commission members to fill out before we appoint them. Okay, and that, that should be uh, submitted um, prior to or the by the Friday before the Tuesday meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can I can amend uh, section two dash three four six appointments and provide language to that effect. Thank you. Okay, and I'll support that motion. Okay, thank you. Motion and support. Please call the roll. I have. Motion by DeMonico, supported by Lucido. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. Next item on the agenda is discussion and possible motion of the Thackate grant program to the entire community. Now, this is something that I brought forward. So now we talked about the FACA program that's in the DDA. Um, and what my question was to that was to Ms. Doom, where is the money coming from to do this grant program? I don't think I said the entire community. I think uh, that was something Councilman Curley said, because I don't want to just, you know, I want to do a uh, baby step. So, so whatever our priority was to focus on Nine Mile, and then, because we have more businesses on my, Nine Mile than Kelly, Let's just let's see how this works first. So since we are already doing the DDA, if you guys want to do Nine Mile and then later on down the line do Kelly Road or something like that, but I want to know where the money is going to come from if we do another area for the FACA grant program, Ms. Doom. That would be a decision for council to make. Uh, the uniqueness of a DDA district is that as the values go up in the district, and those uh, boundaries have already been identified. Ta the tax dollars are captured for reuse in that DDA. So that's where the funds do come from for the facade improvement program. Now going on Nine Mile or Kelly or you know whatever designated areas the council would like, it'll be up to council to decide, but my uh, first thought would be from the general fund. Um, you certainly can set a limit each year of how many you know, grants you'd like to give out but uh, unless uh, Mr. Blum has some ideas of uh, for funding that uh, are different from the general fund, I, I'd welcome to hear that if he's still online. Uh, yes, I, I'm still online and there actually would be no other option but general fund. Um, you're correct, the DDA has their own funding source and it's their money they're spending. Um, something outside of the DDA would be a general fund expenditure. Um, and council, if they went with a program, could could budget a certain amount, you know, set a limit each year, however they wanted to do it, but it would definitely have to come out of the general fund. Now, with the medical marijuana coming to East Point, and we get, I believe it's five thousand dollars for the permit. Can we set aside a percentage of those dollars for the businesses? So we do twenty percent of that five thousand dollars. That can help to pay for those grant, those match. It's a matching grant. So if we give out a thousand dollars, you know, they have to match it. But I was trying to figure out, can we use that? That's still the general fund, though. But just saying, based upon the the permits that we get out of that five thousand dollars, do twenty percent of that money to help businesses. I'll step in at council this point. It. Yeah, it would have to be a council approval. The concern that we have is that the five thousand dollar permit fee. Uh, we're not even certain it will cover the costs of our uh, the hours and the time that the planning commission will have to work on uh, with the inspections and with a, a number of things. Um, so we're not sure that 5,000 will even stretch for the cost of our uh, employees and the time spent. But it, it's, as Randy mentioned, it is a council decision. Uh, Madam Mayor. Yes, sir, Councilman Crowley. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we talked about this our last meeting, and um, I had made a statement that uh, um, if you were in the DDA, you're very lucky. Uh, you you get banners out on the street, you get flower beds out on the street, uh, and the rest of the city 
because they get those things. Um, I, I would, I guess I would not be in favor of limiting to maybe just Nine Mile Road or just Cali to in fact open it up to the entire city, put a limit on it. How much can we take out of the general fund? And what was it? Um, okay, $3,000 maximum? Up, up to $3,000. Okay, up to $3,000. Oh. A council can determine how much money uh, with uh, Randy's uh, recommendation. But, you know, if you live on a business street and we don't select that, you know, they they may need as much help as somebody on Kelly Road or Nine Mile Road. So I would, I would like to see it open up to the entire city. Madam Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, in my, in my opinion, I would prefer waiting before moving ahead with the entire city or even another street to see how well it works out with the DDA before we make the commitment to amending our budget. Um, maybe this is something that we can discuss to put in next year's budget to make sure that we have the funds available to go forward with it. And then we can at that time discuss how many applications we would like to do. And by then hopefully the DDA will have already had theirs underway. So we can kind of see just how well it worked out in the DDA area while they're using their funds to um, do the facade program. And then we can kind of go from there because then we'll have more uh, information if it worked out well or not. I don't think we were making a motion tonight, uh, Mayor Pro I think we're just discussing it so they can have those options ready for us, Ms. Doom. Uh, I, I just like to, and I see Kim leaning into the camera also, yeah. um, but I'd like to point out one thing is that uh, it would be difficult to use the, the DDA, the folks in the DDA who have applied for these grants this year as a, a bellwether on how well it's going uh, because so many of our businesses are still struggling. They do not have the funds, even with our, our grant uh, to assist them, they're just keeping their heads above water. So this year in itself is not a good year to see how the DDA has, um, how successful it's been, because we know that there are businesses out there who would gladly join in and improve their buildings, but um, they're just not in a position to this year. So I, I think the next, the year after, if the economy rebounds, if COVID starts to die out, I think we'll have a clearer picture of how successful it is. But I, I'm going to ask if you don't mind, Mayor, I'd like Kim to just step in and, and share with you um, what's happening right now with this grant. So as of right now, we only had two applicants. So the DDA board um, decided to extend the time limit until next June, because that's the end of the fiscal year to allow other um, businesses the opportunity. And I'll be out passing out flyers and knocking on doors. Um, it's sad to see that there are a number of uh, more vacant properties on Nine Mile and on Gratiot. Um, additionally, there are funds available through the county, through the CDBG and the home funds that are available home for um, residences, some of the CDBG also for residences, um, the Macomb County uh, right now controls where those funds go. Um, sadly, in a um, couple of months ago, the CDBG um, districts or census tracts, census blocks in the area were in, in, in East Point were expanded, um, but that does allow for additional financing. Um, the push would be made to um, Macomb County that CDBG funds not be used just for, just for roads and for parks um, because traditionally through the state they are also used for housing rehab um, and other things like that. So um, I'm, I, I put some information together. I'm happy to uh, share that with the city manager to uh, share with you guys. Thank you so much. Yes, please uh, share that because you said we can use CDBG funding to um, give grants to these businesses. Okay, and also like uh, Mayor Potem was saying, see how the, the FACA is going with the DDA. So this is our first year doing this. We've done it for a couple of years. I wanna see the, the history and how many uh, businesses actually got into the grant, used the grant and how successful it was. Okay, moving right along. So that'll be something we hopefully can work on for next year. So a lot of things that we cannot do this year due to the pandemic and uh, certain other numerous amount of things we want to be ready to help these businesses next year. And so moving right along, um, we're going to the discussion on complete streets and non-motorized 
master plan. This was brought up by Councilman DeMonico to be added to the agenda, Councilman. Sure, thanks, Mayor. So first of all, I know there was a lot of information included. Don't worry if you didn't read every single word by now. It's, uh, it was a busy weekend for sure. But just at a high level, what I wanted to just bring forward is this information so that we can just make sure we have a plan for when we reconstruct Nine Mile. Um, at this past uh, planning commission meeting, it seemed like maybe it's a, a little uh, sooner than I thought that we should be getting plans together. I want to make sure that we, you know, if we're reconstructing, at least from my point of view, you know, obviously we might all have uh, different ideas, that we make a walkable nine mile and more, I think, just welcoming. I think these days, you know, like a five, a five lane concrete road is just not very welcoming, you know, just even a refuge island breaking it up in the middle. Um, makes it feel a lot more comfortable and something that you'd be more comfortable walking on or biking on um, and if we can include bike lanes and that sort of thing. So there were two things I wanted to include. There was the complete streets ordinance which just in general makes sure that we put priority to non-motorized transportation um, when we do new roads, uh, you know, depending on which road it is, of course, some side streets that might not make sense, but the main roads it would. And then the non-motorized master plan part is a lot more in depth, and that's what McKenna had uh, proposed to us two years ago. Um, and that'd be a really in-depth plan that they put together. You know, they had a, you know, I think it's a $42,500 plan they put forward. That'd be more of a long-term thing that goes along with just our normal master plan about just our planning throughout the city for years and years to come, not just Nine Mile. But I guess I just wanna make sure, and I don't know if, you know, Ms. Doom or uh, uh, any other city administrators had any, in, any input on how we should go forward to make sure that we do discuss all the different things for Nine Mile or any other, especially upcoming projects. Everything else maybe we can put on the back burner for just a little bit, just to make sure that we do get all that out. We, uh, we will be having meetings and uh, we're fully aware of, of the attempt to have complete streets and the importance. Uh, so that discussion will continue, but I will um, ask Mr. Abraham to speak as he's really gotten involved in writing a grant. He's looked at you know all of the options for complete streets and he may have a little bit more to add to this discussion. Mr. Abraham, are you still on? I think maybe. If you are, we don't hear you. If I may. Uh, Ms. Palmer. Um, we had a really good um, Zoom meeting with AEW and with McKenna regarding the grant for SEMCOG. Um, it, it really appears that everybody is now on the same page, um, particularly regarding Nine Mile. Because there are, there was another grant um, coming through Wayne State, uh, through through um, uh, the county, that we we're going to focus on Kelly Road and some of the others. But um, as it relates to Nine Mile, I think that we had a, uh, we're brought everybody together. We have a second meeting scheduled um, to really focus on what needs to be done to engage the community. Um, there are some issues as it relates to. Um, bike lanes and the amount of traffic on Nine Mile, but again, the refuge islands and, and some additional things city manager brought up. Also, the street lights is, is their way to bring it down. Um, Mr. Bloom has set up a meeting with DTE. I mean, all the pieces are coming together. We're actually, uh, per Steve Pangori, we're a little bit behind the curve, but um, Laura Hall from McKenna thinks we can catch up. Um, so it, it really seems like we're moving forward um, collaboratively to get a plan for Nine Mile because we have the funds coming in for the reconstruction over the next couple of years, which is a really good thing. Any more questions, Councilman DeMonico, before we go forward? Well, was there any, well, I guess I don't know if any other council members had anything to mention, but was there any uh, council action we need to do ASAP, um, or should we have a discussion on what we'd like to see? Because I'm guessing everyone on council wants to kind of give some input on what 
nine mile will look like if we're reconstructing the whole thing. <laughs> we should know shortly if we are successful in our grant uh, applications. Uh, Mr. Abraham has submitted one. McKenna has also submitted one. And that is for the study of uh, pedestrian friendly bike lanes, what we can do with that. And once that is, uh, we, we hear and we, we're very positive. We were denied last year through SEMCOG, but um, they've been very, very positive that they believe will be accepted this year. So once we hear a word from that, we would love to sit down with council and gather input, um, have a meeting of the minds, uh, discuss what we all have on the table, what we can do and go forward. Um, and also bring the community in. We, we'd like to hear what people have to say. You know, I drive my nine mile every day and, uh, and, and I see the same folks walking and I see some folks kind of struggling a little bit as they're trying to bring their groceries home or they're trying to get across the street safely. And so, you know, those are observations that I have that I'll give my input in on the uh, safety for our residents and also the beautification of nine miles. So yeah, we really like as much input as we can get and go from there so we have a clear path. Any other questions, Councilman? Thought did Mayor Pro Tem, you raised your hand, I thought, oh, a second ago. I did, but, but Ms. Doom answered my question when she spoke, so I, I don't even need to uh, say anything. Else. Okay, well, great discussion. Thank you for adding this on the agenda, Councilman. The next item is discussion on Halloween. Again, this was the item that Councilman DeMonico added to the agenda. Councilman yeah. DeMonico. Sure, and sorry everyone for taking up so much time tonight on the agenda, but um, oh, no. Yeah. What'd you say? Oh, <laughs> What's no. But that's um, that's that's good good work. You know, you're you're worried about your city. That's what you're supposed to do. Thanks. Um, for this item, and I I, I didn't want to make it a lengthy discussion or anything, but just. And it's probably, I mean, really only bad news to me for sure. With COVID-19 going on, I just think, um, and I, I provided a couple links, but it's a pretty high um, risk for COVID-19. I know we usually just, we usually do a proclamation, you know, about trick-or-treating and set a certain time. I just, myself, would not be interested in signing something like that this year. I really hope people try not to trick-or-treat or if they do, do it somehow safely um but um i i didn't know what everyone else thought i just wanted to bring it up today since we only have one more meeting uh, before halloween thank you for bringing this up uh, i think i spoke with director of public safety is he still on the line i know he has some ideas about making east point uh more safer on halloween director rohi are you still there director i guess I see He's something. Yeah. Well, I know he talked about doing um, some things with the city um, and talking to the neighborhood watch and doing uh, some of the things that they did last year about keeping the lights on, you know, some of the protocol in uh, regards to this Halloween. I think he has some additional ones as far as, you know, passing out masks and things like that. So I wish he was on the phone still. Maybe he stepped away and still is on the phone. But um, Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Hi. Oh, good. Yeah, we're going to put something out in our Facebook page in the next few days about just about safety, you know, especially for the children. Um, I still plan on giving out uh, both the police and the fire department, giving out um, the glow in the dark necklaces for the kids so they're visible when they're crossing the street. That's a big hit every year. And we have officers assigned to every subdivision. They're not on the main streets. We want them in the subdivisions specifically. We want them engaging, you know, with the kids passing out uh, the necklaces. And we may even, I'm going to talk to the fire chief tomorrow. We may even give out candy at the station, you know, or maybe do a trunk or treat something, you know, you know, we, we hate to take Halloween away from the kids, but, uh, you know, I don't know how people feel, you know, kids come to their homes going door to door, but uh, I'm, I'm certainly think if we can meet certain protocols, you know, wearing the mask and gloves and, passing out candy, I think we'll be okay. I have a comment. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I agree that I think that, you know, like the CDC did put out their um, concerns with trick-or-treating this year. So I would like to, you know, try to encourage residents not to go out trick-or-treating. 
I would be, um, I did reach out to the schools because they always do trunk or treat, um, you know, the East Point Public Schools. Um, and they said they were thinking about maybe just doing candy bags this year for the kids because they want to um, limit, um, obviously, the, you know, contact with, you know, different people doing like a trunk or treat or something like that. So if uh, Director Rohib was interested in doing some sort of like candy bag, you just drive up and pick it up at the police or fire department. I mean, I would definitely be interested in, in helping out or donating to that. Sounds yeah, good. definitely. We, we, we can definitely do something. Sounds good, like a drive through, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, something that's going to be safe where there's, you know, no contact, you know, but maybe still looks good for the city to be doing something because of the lack of trick or treating this year. So those kids can still, you know, have something. Sounds good to me. I think a couple businesses are actually going drive through um, trick or treating. I was invited to some of the businesses to to attend, and um, just making sure. And I'll I'll give you that information, uh, council and the director, to make sure that they're following, following protocol if they do do those things. So um, if they're gonna, you know, if the the businesses want to help and make me uh, East Point, you know, helping with the kids and things like that, I don't want to stop them. But we do want to always assist in making it safer so i'll give you that give you all that information on uh, what places want to do those things and how we can assist in making them feel safe and passing out masks and whatever we can do uh any other discussion on this um madam mayor i don't have any more discussion on this but there was one thing because I, I wasn't really clear when we approved our agenda this evening that okay. i want to make sure that you know i don't we, we specifically say item j but we do need to approve the resolution for um, Indigenous Peoples Day. Okay. I think we should we should also for National Hispanic Heritage Month. I would think. I mean, I'm in favor of both, but I think I I, I don't want to. I don't think we should do any proclamations that possibly all of council uh, wouldn't be in favor of. I think we should vote on those. Let's start with Jay. Let's start with the. Well, we can just, I, I can, we can just approve them together, the proclamation. Okay. Sounds well, this good. resolution, does it, it doesn't, it needs approval. Do we normally approve proclamations? I don't remember doing that. Um, Mr. Albright? I don't, I don't recall ever approving a proclamation, just resolutions. Yeah, I don't, that's something new. You, you had a lot of new stuff tonight, uh, Councilman DeMonaco. So I'll leave it up to Mayor Owens because she's the one that added that to the agenda if she wants to do an approval on it. No, I don't want to do an uh, approval. We did the proclamation like we do most of them. We never do a vote on it. So we're going to continue with the um, resolution. So I will move ahead with making a motion to approve the resolution to acknowledge Indigenous Peoples Day. Support that. Okay, support it. Please call the roll. Councilperson Lucido. Yes. Councilperson DeMonico. Yes. Councilperson Curley. He's muted. <laughs> Councilman Curley. Yes. Councilperson Baker. Yes. Mayor Owens. Yes, absolutely. Um, next item is payroll and bills. Madam Mayor, I will motion to pay the bills in the amount of seventeen million two hundred seventy-five thousand four hundred nine dollars and seven cents. Support. Move to support it. Please call the roll. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yeah, it sounds like a lot, but it's a lot of taxes we're just giving back out to other uh, groups. 13.4 yes. million. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. The next item is a hearing of the public. So if anyone didn't get to speak at the first one, you have an opportunity to speak now. You have three minutes. Please open, now the hearing of the public is open, Mr. Fairbrother. Yes, Madam Mayor, I am opening up the chat right now. Um, as Mayor Owens just said, if a member of the public wishes to speak during the hearing of the public, please raise your digital hand or make a comment in the chat box.
Madam yeah. Mayor, I see no digital hands raised and no comments in the group chat box. So I believe it's now safe to close the floor. Second hearing of the public is closed. Now we'll head on to Mayor and Council report, starting with Councilman DeMonico. And thanks, Mayor. Um, as we said today, I think it's it's been quite a uh, news-filled weekend. Uh, not only the uh, Michigan Supreme Court opinion about the governor's emergency orders, and I guess I'll just start with that. You know, I think it can be up for debate if, um, or you know, people could be on both sides of the issue of um, if the governor should have been able to do multiple emergencies orders in a row, or if it's even a constitutional. Uh, power the governor can have. That was kind of the conversation of that opinion. But I just hope that everyone just continues to wear masks. Um, even if it's not required, if it's required or not by law, please just do that. It's just a very easy way to not pass on COVID to someone else because you can be asymptomatic. Please just continue to wear a mask um, no matter how you feel, I guess, about that opinion on Friday. Friday. Um, and second, of course, the you know president announced that he has COVID. Hopefully, he gets better. I hope that he wears a mask also. And then also, it looks like maybe county health departments or the state health departments will be left up to mandate masks. Hopefully, they all do. I hope our county executive or our county health department does. If the state can't, everyone just, just try to be safe so that we can keep it, you know as many people safe as we can. Uh, during this pandemic until, you know, a vaccine comes out and we can, we can get through this. Um, there is a survey, survey on the health department website, just kind of general COVID questions and health questions while we're in this pandemic. Just go on the health department's website, Macomb County Health Department's website, and take that if you got a minute. And then, of course, the November election is less than a month away, and I want to mainly mention that we have a partial term for city council uh, uh, up for election and that it's ranked choice. So it'll be East Point second ranked choice election as we did discuss earlier. Make sure you know you learn about that if you didn't happen to vote in the last one and uh, make sure you vote in that ranked choice election. I think it's a great way to elect people and I am looking forward to turning my ballot in and that's all I had Madam Mayor. Thank you, sir. Um, we're gonna go to Councilman Baker. Um, actually, I have nothing tonight. So uh, thank everybody for, tune, for joining us. And everybody have a good night. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Crowley. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. A uh, couple of things. Uh, talking about Halloween, our church uh, is doing what we call a boo bags, B-O-O, -O, like boo. And the bags can be purchased, I think there's eight in a package at the dollar store. And we're, we're asking all of our members of our church to go to the dollar store, buy how many you want, and you fill them up with candy. And you put a, a little message on there, um, hey, K Harvey and Carol, this is from the church, God bless you, and put it on your front, front steps. So that's an idea if you want to do that. It's called a boo bags, B-O-O. -O. Uh, the other thing, the other thing is, and I told you that last week, uh, that I'm really upset about people speeding up and down the streets. Um, I'm going to tell you, I live on Lexington, and maybe I shouldn't have told you that because by the time I get through talking, I may end up having my cars damaged or my bay window smashed. But um, we have a speeder on Lexington, and uh, I can say that. We have a plan. I checked with the police department. It's not going to be yield signs. It's not going to be step signs, stop signs, but I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. And um, if people want to know the discussion I had with George, and I'll have to check with George to uh, make sure that everybody can do it, but I'm really concerned. He'll go down the street and make a, what do you call it when he turned the car, a, a UE? What do you, is that what it's called? Yeah, you turn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and go down in force and make that turn around and leave tire marks and then just zoom down to the next street, Haas, and do the same thing and then go to his house, which is about five houses down in the middle of Lexington. So fair warning to you, my friend. But 
God bless everybody that's concerned about the speeders. I don't have an answer, but I'm going to get them. And uh, good night to everybody. God bless you. And uh, as Cardi said, regardless of what people say, wear your mask. It will save tens of thousands of lives. Tens of thousands. Make no mistake about that. And thank you, uh, Cardi, for bringing that up. That's it, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Corelli. Mayor Pro Tem Lucido. So first I would like to start out by, I, you know, COVID, this is, we're I think in our seventh month of dealing with this pandemic. And I want to take a minute to, you know, just hope everyone, I, I know Mr. DeMonico brought up the president having it, but everyone that has been affected by this um, to, you know, hopefully overcome it and, you know, get healthy again, because it is absolutely terrible. Um, over the past few weeks, I, you know, happened to go into a decent amount of businesses in the city and some of them were having their employees and this is even before the Supreme Court decision in uh, Michigan was overturned. Um, some of the employees, some of these businesses I don't feel were enforcing their employees to wear masks. And it's a concern to me because we're in this public health crisis and we should all be looking out for each other. Whether the governor has the right to order us to wear a mask or anyone else, or if you think that it's appropriate, we as residents and as human beings, we should want to protect each other and we should be willing to wear a mask to do so. Um, I understand that sometimes maybe it's uncomfortable and you wanna take a break, but for the most part, if you're serving the, the, the public and you're serving the residents of East Point, I, I would really hope that you would want to keep everyone safe and you would go ahead with wearing a mask because I do think it's very important. As Mr. Curley said, it will save tens of thousands of lives. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else this evening, Madam Mayor, except for thank um, everyone on City Council and all City Administration for all of your hard work as always. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm gonna make it short and sweet. I wanna say, I wanna thank the police department. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I do have some masks, some boxes of masks left over okay. from the chamber um and from macomb county and please if there are businesses that that are at issue let me know i'd be happy to pass those out okay i think we talked about that uh months ago miss Holman. so hopefully you can reach out to some of those businesses um again and um because those boxes should have been i'm already done with and um, yeah, they should have, we should have been getting more, um, you know, and talking to the Chamber of Commerce and passing those businesses, you know, passing those masks out to those businesses. So that was something we talked about months ago. And it sounds like we're not doing that, uh, hearing what Mayor Pro Tem is saying. So we need to get better. And that's what we're going to do. So thank you. So um, moving forward, I am, I just want to say I'm happy with the work the fire department and the police department is doing. Um, I looked at the status and the things uh, of, of crime and things like that, and we're decreasing our crime throughout the city. Um, every city has problems. Every city has issues. Well, uh, I like that what we're doing is we get we have a neighborhood watch. We have so many things in our city that's making us better, decreasing certain things in our areas, you know, uh, crime and trash and different uh, techniques that we're uh, doing with the help of not only our city manager, but our directors and our residents. So I want to say thank you. And I want to congratulate all our new members on our commission board. We have a lot of new uh, members on um, every other board. And I want to say thank you for, you know, taking the time out of your busy schedule to volunteer to work in our community. And also I want to send a prayer out to all those that, that have been affected by COVID and the families that, you know, people that were lost. Also to our president, he is our commander in chief. So I always want to uh, pray for leadership um and making sure that he's safe as well as other people in leadership as well so um prayers go out to his his family his administration and those he may have been around and um just continuously pray for our, our leadership um from local to federal to state just make sure that we always put, you know make sure whether we like them or not they're still our leaders and make sure that um we pray for them to their health, their strength, and to make sure that they're moving forward with the best interests of the people that they serve. So saying that, we want to go to adjournment. Can I get a motion? So moved. For moving and support it, please follow the roll. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. 
Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes, meeting adjourned. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.